Yeah, we're not going to see. Oh, you hit it on here. Can you hit it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> okay, welcome everybody to this meeting, the second community meeting that we're holding uh, on the Clifford Park Community Food Forest. We are Resilient Hartford, sponsoring the Clifford Park Community Food Forest. We're a seven member commission of the town. We've been busy for about the last six years working to bring Hartford, the Hartford community together to engage in activities that increase the town's ability to deal with emergencies in the future. Uh, this year, we are, have begun a project aimed at enhancing a public park, encouraging local food production, and educating the public about soil health and bringing together residents in the neighborhood. It is taking place in West Hartford and is called the Clifford Park Community Food Forest. It will be situated in a part of Clifford Park that is not now being used for any games or recreation. If we are, are successful with this project, we hope to sponsor similar efforts in some of Hartford's 18 other parks. We have hired two experts in permaculture and soil health to guide us, Kat Buxton and Karen Gain. They both live in the Upper Valley. Uh, on May 12th, Kat gave us a super interesting and educational talk by Zoom about enhancing the soil at Clifford Park. This was recorded and is on YouTube and you could see it at any time. And I would encourage that. It's a terrific talk. Tonight, Karen Gamey will talk with us about designs that we have come up with in a series, in a series that throughout the summer of design meetings uh, with uh, people who are involved with Brazilian Hartford and neighbors from the community uh, and a number of experts on various, various parts of uh, building a food forest. Karen is the founder and designer at Permaculture Solutions and Ecological Landscape Design Business, where she designs gardens that maximize biodiversity and ecosystem health. She is also the facilitator for a team run nonprofit organization called Change the World Kids, where teenagers work on social, environmental, and food justice issues. Karen is a certified permaculture instructor master composter and has installed edible and na native habitats for schools, hospitals, and municipalities. She has also helped to found the Upper Valley Apple Corps and the Regeneration Corps, both community initiatives working towards a local thriving food system. So without further ado, welcome Karen. Thank you, Kai, um, for that introduction. And um, it's great to be here. And it's I'm really thrilled to uh, be able to present some of the um, ideas that the design team has come up with. And I'm about to share uh, a presentation that we'll just go through together that's going to go over a little bit of the history of the site and some of the things that we have come up with. Um, but before that, I would love to just go around and if everyone could just say their name and maybe like where they're calling in from, um, just to get a sense of the community that's here. Um, and if you, and also just mention if you've already been a part of the process a bit, because um, that way I'll know how much to go over as, as far as like the history um, of the site. Um, uh, and what should I do? I guess I could call names is probably the best way to go about this. And we'll just kind of keep it short. And um, but yeah, I appreciate that being able to um, connect in a little bit, even over this um, medium here. Um, Kat, can I pass it to you? You can, thanks, Karen. Um, my name is Kat Buxton and I live in Sharon, Vermont and I'm the soil health um, person involved with this project for the long haul. Mm -hmm. 
Awesome. And I'm just going to go across my screen to Matt and maybe everyone who's there at the at the town hall. Yeah. Hi, I'm Matt Osborne. Um, I'm a planner in the planning department here in Hartford, and uh, I provide staff support for Resilient Hartford. And I'm Kai Cochran, and I live in West Hartford, and uh, I'm part of Resilient Hartford. I'm Sue Buckholz, and I live sort of in West Hartford, although my husband tells me we live in the Brockway district. Um, <laughs> we identify with West Hartford, and I, I just read about this project, so I had to come down. It's wonderful to see all of you up there on the screen. Awesome. Thank you. Is that everyone there? That's all of you. Okay, great. So I'm going to pass it out to Kira. Hi. So I'm actually logged in as my daughter, <laughs> but my name is Marlena and uh, we live in Quichi. And I'm a native Vermonter. And I recently started at the Vermont Law School. And I'm getting a master's in food and agricultural law. And I stumbled upon your project the other day while doing research for a paper. And I was extremely excited because this was an idea I've had for a long time. So I'm super excited to see that somebody's doing it <laughs> and I'm looking forward to being a part of it, hopefully. Thanks. Great. Sounds good. Okay, over to Earl. Uh, hello, I'm Earl Hatley. I live in Quichi. Uh, I'm new to this project. I'm, uh, working on building an Abenaki garden uh, at uh, Koala and Kuchi. Thank you. Uh, Frederica. Okay. I'm Frederica. Um, I live in White River Junction and I've been involved with this project as a member of the steering committee, the original um, subcommittee of Resilient Hartford, um, finding the park and uh, uh, determining the property and what we can bring in and what we can't and so forth. And um, I really enjoyed working with this project. Thanks. Okay, over to Sally. Hi, I'm Sally Manser, and uh, I'm new to West Hartford, and um, this is my first time at one of these meetings. I tried attending a couple of months ago, um, and uh, so anyway, I get to stay the whole time, and um, okay. I'm, I'm a neighbor to Clifford Park, so. Project. Great. Wonderful. So great to meet everyone here. Okay, John. Hi, I'm uh, John Reed. I'm vice chair of the uh, Hartford Planning Commission and uh, liaison from the Planning Commission to Resilient Hartford. And I'm uh, most enthusiastic about <clears throat> this project. Thank you. Okay, Rebecca. Hi, I'm Becca. I'm calling in from Hartford. Uh, I live in Hartford. I'm a middle school teacher down in Springfield and do a lot of farm to school education. And I happened upon uh, this meeting and the project when I was going to pay my water bill on the Hartford town website. And I was very excited to see it and was interested in learning more and seeing if I could be involved. Great, excellent. Okay, Allie. Allie T. Um, Allie had put in the chat oh. um, that she is also a Hartford uh, liaison and having internet trouble. Okay, great. Thanks, Allie. Sandra. Hi, I'm uh, Sandy Carey and I work at the West Hartford Library. And I'm actively involved in West Hartford and have been to a couple meetings and looking forward to helping you guys out. Um, is it next weekend? Uh, the 18th. 
Yeah. Um, I come as often as I can, but um, I think it's a great project. And I love the artwork. I don't know who did the artwork for the map, but I want one. I think you should sell them. Raise some money. Oh, Thanks. awesome. I think our fundraising committee is looking for members. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Okay. Um, now, okay, over to Leah. Hi, um, I'm Leah Mosenthal, and I have been serving on the Brazilian Hartford Committee for, oh, it's been within the last year, so I'm kind of a new addition. Awesome. And Ali, okay, Ruth. Hi, I'm Ruth Fleischman, and I live in the hills of West Hartford across the river from Clifford Park. And I've been involved in this project a little bit in the last little while, and I'm excited about it. Great, thank you, Ruth. Um, Barry. Good evening. I'm Barry McCabe. Uh, live in West Hartford in our neighborhood abuts the park. Great. Great. It's so wonderful to have so many neighbors right there. Okay. And it looks like uh, Becky. Are you there, Becky? Okay, well, what's nice about this format is people can attend from um, wherever they are and sometimes needing to do other things too. So that is totally fine. Um, okay, so I'm gonna um, share- Hey, Karen, it's oh. Dylan, I'm here as well. Oh, thank you, Dylan. Oh my gosh, and if anyone um, else I missed, I'm sorry. so sorry. Oh, also it looks like Rebecca, I apologize. Thank you, Dylan. No, it's me. Um, so my name is Dylan Kreis. I've been on The Crow since its inception along with Kai and Laura. Um, and this idea actually, when I worked for the town with the parks department was kind of my pet project and planted the seeds with this group. So I'm glad that they are germinating and uh, growing. So I looked forward to seeing how this uh, propagates throughout the town. Cause I think this is just the fir first park where this can be done. So glad to be here. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for jumping in. Um, it looks like I also, um, maybe Rebecca, did you get a chance to introduce yourself, Rebecca Osborne? Yep. I, I shared before. Okay, great. Anyone else on the call that hasn't yet introduced themselves? All right. So we're going to dive in. I'm going to share my screen. And we've put together just a little presentation um, that includes a bit of background information. Oops, sorry, not that. Um, uh, about the park itself and, let me get rid of this, okay. Um, um, the place, oh, oops, <laughs> I apologize, hold on. Okay. So um, welcome and um, Kat and I are so thrilled to be working on this project um, together and with you all. And um, I'm just gonna share a couple of slides and we get, did some introductions. Um, and after I give a little overview of um, our time together, um, we'll go into a little bit of a land acknowledgement. We wanna acknowledge um, the space that we occupy and those that came before us and are still here and we, that we hope to work with. Um, and then I'm gonna, um, just give a little brief history about Clifford Park as a site um, on a little bit of a timeline. We can see how it's um, evolved over the years and what its current conditions are um, and some of the community input that we've garnered so far um, from a couple of our, I think this is our third community meeting. So, um, and this is, and it's an open um, process. So kind of we're always wanting to hear more and share ideas and resources um, with everyone who's here. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the project design and what we've come up with as far as phase one um, for some planting ideas this fall coming up in a couple weeks. And um, also what it's going to look like to kind of what is going to be necessary to maintain um, this space as a um, food forest and community space. Um, and then we'll just talk about some phases and timelines. 
and jump into questions and discussion. Um, so if I'm talking too fast or kind of brush over anything, I really welcome anyone to um, just kind of call out. And I can't see you at this point, but, um, but feel free to butt in with questions. <laughs> um, Karen, you, yes. Uh, we can't see your screen. Uh-oh. Okay, hold on a second, let me see. There you go. Okay, we're there? Yes. Okay, thank you for saying so. Okay, can you see all the screen now? Perfect. Okay, great. So I just kind of gave a verbal rundown of our little agenda for our time together. Um, so I'm gonna read this land acknowledgement that came from um, John and Donna Moody of the Winter Center for Indigenous Traditions. Um, so we are gathering online, uh, online on the ancient grounds of the Wobotek Odenak White River Village in Natakina, or our land. We're gathering in the middle of this ancient nation homeland, which includes Vermont, New Hampshire, Northern Massachusetts, Western Maine, and Southern Quebec. This is the sovereign homeland of the Abenaki nation and people. Since ancient times, the Abenaki know that they have always been here, are still here, and will always be here. We pay our respects to them and to the wisdom of their elders and their culture. We are aware that many newcomer families from Europe, Africa, Asia have moved, oh, moved or fled to this area and this the region were welcomed from the 19th, or I'm sorry, the 1600s on and given indigenous seeds and plants, shown the ways of sogol, sogolikan or maple sugaring introduced to many cultural technologies and ways of living from canoe, toboggan, snowshoe, and basket making to ways of farming, fishing, and living with and caring for the land, waters, and air in good ways, which are still widely practiced in the Abenaki homeland. We are committed to continuing to learn to care for the land, waters, and air here in partnership with the many Abenaki nations peoples in a better, more respectful way. So thank you for taking the time to let that um, integrate. And it feels like a really um, important way to kind of start us off on this project that we're um, starting off on together. Um, so here's a, a little bit of a timeline of the Clifford Park, uh, which is right along the White River. Um, and that was owned uh, previously, um, well, after colonization by the um, Hazen family and was then given to Irwin Clifford and the space itself actually has a fairly interesting um, history in terms of what it was used for. Some of was, there was livestock there. Um, there was also horses and animals that were stored for a meat market that was getting processed into dog food. Um, so it has an interesting history and a lot of possibility to build from. Um, but then Irene hit, um, and of course there was a lot of um, silt that was displaced and um, trees that had come to, were um, put were you know. Um, I'm sorry, um, blown down, and also some invasives that came in. Um, and there were some replanting efforts um, that were initiated by the town in partnership with um, conservation districts um, for replanting. And the parks of this park in particular has mostly been used kind of for gatherings and ball games over the years, but has mostly not been used regularly in the past couple of years. Um, so thanks to Dylan and um, Resilient Hartford, uh, in the town of Hartford for being open to um, kind of coming up with a, a community use, multi-use um, food forest um, that could be a space for um, a lot of different things to take place. Um, so Kat and I came on and have done a couple of uh, different workshops relating to permaculture and ecological um, design and species considerations, um, soil health. And we've had a wonderful presentation from a, um, a tree expert that um, has helped inform some um, species consideration for some nut trees that are um, really wonderful to grow and easy to harvest and full of really good nutritious um, oils. Um, so we'll be talking about that in the coming up here. Um, so this is the current condition of the park. Um, this is looking towards the south um, and there's a building um, and you can see there's kind of, I think over the years, just like over mowing the um, organic matter is kind of died, died off. Um, and we're really kind of working with, uh, I guess we could, you know, just think of it as a, 
a clean slate um, uh, to work on building the soil up. And you know, there's lots of ways that we are going to be doing that. Um, but most importantly, kind of bringing living roots uh, with plants uh, to the space. Um, here's just another view looking to the north. Um, give you a sense of place of where we are um, talking about. Um, so I'm not going to run through this whole list, but I'll kind of give us a chance to um, look over. This is some of the community input that uh, was received from a survey that Resilient Hartford sent out. Um, and it's really inspiring ideas from perennial crops to you know, medicinals, community food gardens, spaces to grow for the food shelves, um, spaces for workshops um, and for um, picnicking and family gatherings. So lots of great community input so far that we really hope to build on and, um, and kind of incorporate and integrate into the process as we go. Um, so what's great about um, where we're at with this process is there's a lot of other um, communities and cities around um, the world and also in the country that are creating food for us and really kind of bringing um, a sense of community and learning and co-learning and multi-use uh, back to the commons. And um, so we're really given this opportunity to kind of uh, put some of our best ideas and um, and real um, you know, grit into a project that can be beautiful. Um, and really create biodiversity and opportunities for eco-literacy and also building in ecosystem functions, um, creating uh, organic matter and habitat with a lot of the species that we can be planting. Um, so this is, um, again, sorry for a lot of the words that are on the screen tonight, but um, I do feel this is important to share because this is uh, what we came up with as a mission as on the design team and um, I think, you know, it's really important, um, you know, given the times that we're living in to be clear about what we want to create together um, so we can have something that we're working towards and um, practicing as we go. Um, so I think maybe I'll just give us a chance or what would be helpful? Should I read through all this list or should we just read through it silently together? You can read through it. You just have to give us a few minutes. So I just love this. I think it's so inspiring and um, it, you know, it's something that we can um, continue to name and work on. It's really beautiful. So here is um, an aerial shot of the area that we're speaking about. Um, and these lines are actually pretty arbitrary. They're just um, kind of fun ideas and suggestions for various pathways and zones where um, I guess I can bring attention to um, this oval yellow area. It would be our, rip our riparian buffer zone um, where we are uh, hoping to continue the restoration that's been, that's already been started, um, but you know, by way of planting uh, really great riparian um, trees, but also nut trees that do well in these well-drained areas. Um, and so here's the site again with some dimensions included. And so you can see there's lots of potential here. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the um, processes that we can, that are being considered for, um, for planting. Um, so here's just a little bit more of um, what, we've been work, what we've been up to as a design team, kind of naming some themes around food security and climate mitigation, soil health and opportunities for education and food preservation. Um, and, um, and basically a process of starting uh, with in what we call in permaculture um, from patterns to details. So we have a general sense of what we um, different zones uh, might, um, we might be able to plant with different types of species. Um, and we hope to do this, um, we've been throwing this term around a lot and I thought we could just kind of do some defining and um, this term food forest. 
And so oftentimes people think, oh, this is growing in a forest, in which case sometimes it can be. And a lot of the forests, even around here, I know we're cultivated around the butternut trees, um, but it's also growing like a forest where we can consider um, a lot of different um, ecosystem functions that are taking place from um, you know, soil building and um, uh, species, um, uh, migratory bird, like habitat and um, just many different um, shade. Um, there's so many different functions that come from planting like a forest. And here's just a couple of more of those, the, the different um, ways that um, some of these things can be planted the way we think about like a keystone species. And we'll also be using the term guilds a lot where we'll plant um, a single tree that might be a fruit bearing or a nut bearing tree. And then a community of, plant, of plants around it that are all kind of providing something of value to the whole system. So we might be planting um, flowers that'll bloom early and draw pollinators to help pollinate the trees, as well as plants that are um, good at building soil because they have nice large leaves that will like decompose and build up really good organic matter. Um, and we have ground covers and like strawberry and thyme and herbs. So really thinking of a holistic design process um, to guide us um, as we go. And of course there's all these benefits, but also so many more So this is um, just uh, some a, a basic graphic to give us a sense of what we are going to be um, proposing for planting on coming up on September 18th, which would be our first planting day. Um, so I've listed some of the species that we talked about um, that would be some um, yellow bud hickories that are large um, nut bearing trees that can actually bear, I think, oh no, I'm thinking of the chestnuts that can bear between three and five years. Um, but the yellow bud hickories were thinking of, you know, abundance of like really wonderful, nutritious, um, nutrient dense oils um, that can be harvested from some of these nuts. Um, and also uh, a fruit tree guild. So in the center circle here, we're considering um, some fruit trees that um, where we could plant some guilds around. And so that is a basic idea of what we're thinking of. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I'm hoping that you have lots of good questions. Um, and one of the uh, factors in the design process is um, we haven't been able to yet be on the site to um, take direct measurements and stake out where the trees are gonna go. Um, but that's a process that we would love to do with anyone who's interested in kind of learning about, um, you know, the spacing and considerations um, that, in, that involve planting. Um, but let me see. Um, so this is a, um, a list of a lot of the community collaborators, including you all that are here tonight, uh, Resilient Hartford, Hartford Garden Friends, the Upper Valley Apple Corps, the Regeneration Corps, Change the World Kids um, are both, you know, organizations that are working with youth, connecting with um, land-based just transition and regenerative agriculture projects. And then we've been in touch with the Hartford Area Natural Resources Department and hope to utilize this as a site to um, have workshops and classes maybe taking place. And of course, wanting to continue to work with local Abenaki and indigenous people here um, to incorporate you know, native species methodologies and everything else we should be considering in those ways. And this is more so just kind of a dry chart, um, but just to give us a sense of um, like who is gonna be taking care of what um, and how we can really do this all together. I think the strength of the project will really involve like also the um, passion and commitment from, from this group and, and the neighbors. And as we go, um, the learning opportunities that are gonna take place. And here is just a brief, here's the, well, here's the timeline for the project coming up, um, looking at the community planting on September 18th. And um, one of the considerations that uh, we are having to take into account is that the, um, the best time to plant certain nut trees is in um, more so when they're dormant, uh, which will happen in mid-October. So our nut expert that we're consulting with, Jesse Markson, 
um, has informed us that it's actually best to plant some of the trees then. So we'll have two planting parties um, and work parties September 18th and then sometime in mid-October that works for the bulk of us. Um, so we can really you know, get some of these gills established and some of the keystone species um, in the ground. So um, yeah, I think that's my last slide. Um, and I'd love to hear uh, questions, comments, suggestions. This is Kat. Karen, thank you so much. That was a great summary of so much work that we've all done together so far. Um, really nice job. Um, the only thing that I'll add is that we are negotiating flood plain regulations along oh, the process. Um, and so during those plantings, we'll be keeping close track of any and all materials brought in or taken out. And I'm in charge of that. We don't expect a lot because of the processes that we'll be using. Um, but just to let you know that that is a process in negotiation as well. And we'll be uh, meeting with some, hopefully the floodplain manager on site. As Karen mentioned, it's been a little bit of a challenge to, to do this work without um, actually being able to be on the site, but that is about to change. So we're both really excited to get out there and start planting with you all. Karen, could you go back to the slide that has the map with the, where you, what, where you plan to have trees, where you, the design committee, yeah, that one? Yes. I'm looking for my um, species list too, because, and you might be wondering, where are we getting these trees? <laughs> Um, and part of the collaboration, we're also um, working with 350.org that is, has um, set out a large goal to get trees planted all across the state. Um, so we're gonna be planting some of those yellow bud hickories and I think some um, bur oaks. Um, let's see, is, is it, let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, how's that Ruth? Yeah, that's good, thanks. Uh, for the 18th, we have three uh, butternuts, also called white walnut. And we have three American, um, no, excuse me, burr oak. Yeah. That we, I think those were the six that we were planning for that day. Yeah. And then the fruit guild. And then the fruit. And what fruit, what fruit tree are we? Well, it's really been interesting. I think that we have a lot of like non committal. <laughs> no, I'm not different. But um, I think that we're, I would like to recommend plums actually. But um, more so because I've, well, it's been an incredible plum year, but um, the way that plums grow is they like to kind of branch out like a bowl and their lee or their branches, um, they like to kind of be in close contact and touch with each other. And I actually really love the symbolism of the community um, in, the, in that, in the way that they grow and, and they benefit with more, like, you know, obviously, um, you know, more than two or three. Um, but it's really open for discussion. And I would love to hear, especially the people that are living close to the park, like, are there fruits that you would love to see? And I know um, their peach trees tend to do well in these um, like lower river valleys because um, there's a, it can be a little bit more held warmth, I think. And so that could be a consideration, pears. I know that there was a discussion that there's so many apples, like maybe we don't need to plant more apple trees. <laughs> especially after a year like this but um really it's a, it, this is a community process so let's yeah and right so now what, are we thinking of what's just your idea for the the foundational circle there as far as what tree are you proposing for that this is what i would consider to be like a, a ring of plums right here we were considering um some nut trees or like a butternut for instance um, but because we want to plant guilds and that this is a centerpiece, um, like an interest area, uh, we don't want to shade those guilds too much or have something too tall that will like create a lot of shade. So, um, you know, we'll do a lot of the taller trees along the edge here and then have like a, a so like the butternuts along the edge and the plums interior. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if you can see my little pointer. Yeah, I can see it. Ding, ding, ding. So maybe like you know, between three and five. Hmm. I'm just looking at your species list, Karen, and I noticed that it's basswood, not butterwood, butternut, which I do have as well. 
um, either way, I've got basswood oak, uh, bur oak and butternut all ready to go in the ground. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. I think I've, I've worked off that list. Um, and the basswood is beautiful. It's the linden and it has a lot of medicinal properties. The blossom is um, considered an adaptogen. So it really helps to kind of, um, I would say, um, bring balance in different systems. But anyway, that's like a whole other um, talk is actually, you know, the, the many values of the different species that we're discussing. How soon before our planting date on the 18th, are we gonna be sure about exactly what we're gonna plant and where? Well, we have the what answered. And I think the where, like Kat and I were just talking today, like as soon as we can get there, we're gonna you know, bring some stakes with labels and you know, right. be able to stake it out. And when are you doing that? I would have to check in with Matt to figure or out when we can. You, are you doing that the day of the planting? Or? No, no, we would do that probably next, as early as we can next week. Okay. But I, yeah, we'll have to circle around with you, Matt, just so we can or just figure that out when. Mm -hmm. and, and as far as the exactly what species, can't we determine that tonight? Yeah, let's good like, idea. Let's, let's take a vote on fruit species somehow. Maybe we can go back to gallery view and yeah. do thumbs up or something. <laughs> and this is only for the first, right? So later on, maybe we can add another one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's right. This is sort of a snapshot of what's to come for everyone who visits the park. Yeah. Are people worried about the butternuts being very vulnerable to whatever it is they get and die? Yeah, the I don't think there are butternuts, right? <laughs> oh, I thought you said there were bur there was basswood and butternut. I I do have butternut as well. Um, yeah. My understanding yeah. is that these have been bred to withstand disease, but uh, that remains to be seen. Well, a mixture. I mean, some of each of those is better than too many of the same one. <laughs> right. Yeah. Diversity. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to see some chestnuts. Oh, I think didn't um, uh, Jesse say that they they need to be farther away from the river? Up, up yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, I think that might be on a later planting. Yeah, on yeah on we the they are they are definitely on the list. Mm -hmm. But for later. so, are we just planting trees, or are we also planting the accompanying guild plants this we fall? We are, we're also going to plant the guild plants this fall. Okay. Yeah, what we have, yeah. So we cool. have, we have for the fruit trees, we have plum trees already? Uh, we don't, no, the, that decision is, to, is yet to be made. Um, hopefully, you know, by this group, we can narrow it down. I have another question on, on the uh, planting. When we come that day, should we bring our own shovels and tools, or is that something you guys will have? We will have a lot of extras, but I think the less kind of sharing will is better. So if you have shovels and tools, and then we'll have make sure we have like cleaned handles and everything okay. um, as well. But so there, yeah, we'll have extras on site between Kat and I, we have a lot of tools. Okay. And then my other question was about the fundraising. It was, I just couldn't see it on the slide that you had up there. I know you said something about it, but can you just speak to that for a second? Because I just couldn't read it. Oh yeah, well, there is a fundraising committee that has kind of been looking into, I don't know if I have that info on here. Um, they've been looking into grants and there is a budget that um, from the town right now. Yeah, and so we've been pricing out the trees that we don't already have are gonna be about $12 a piece, um, just so everyone knows and for transparency. And then, um, you know, there'll be other, but yeah, so we're in a process of kind of creating that budget and building it out over a timeline as well. I agree. And has anybody been in contact with the um, anyone at the Queechee leadership? Because I think they've been looking for opportunities to work more with the town of Hartford on uh, these type of community projects. 
So maybe that would be an avenue to explore. Is that the, um, like the Quichi Garden Club there? There's a Quichi Garden Club, but I think there's, and maybe Matt knows more about this, um, but I think there's actually a Quichi group that tries to work with the town of Hartford on community issues. I almost think my husband's on that committee. <laughs> I would, <laughs> I could maybe ask him about that later and send you an email. Okay. I, um, yeah, that was I'm on that committee. Oh, perfect. And uh, I've got this uh, project uh, teed up uh, uh, to uh, try to get them uh, pushing it. Awesome. That's exciting. Let me know if you need any help with that. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. And, and John, what is that committee? It's a community affairs committee. It's a standing uh, committee of uh, the association. <laughs> Aquichi Lakes. Yeah. Well, that's great. See, that's why it's so important that we're all connecting and getting together. And also there's the project at um, that Earl's working on in Kuala, which might be a good connection too. Um, okay. More thoughts, questions? Are we gonna make decisions on uh, trees? Yeah, that would be great. How is everyone feeling about that? I mean, imagine like, maybe we should do a little envisioning exercise and think about, you know, walking into the, on the path up to the forest and we have our basket, you know, what do we want to be putting into that basket? Is it pears, plums? And, and we don't, it's not like it has to be one and not the others. Like there's other areas that fruit trees can um, do well on the site as well. This is just for this first planting. What are the other options? Pears, plums? Pears, plums, peaches, cherries. Those are all great options um, for fruit trees. Uh, anything outside of those categories, I would say would be more experimental. Like I know there's apricots that can be grown and there, you know, that might wanna be, you know, in future considerations, but uh, you know, my suggestion for the first phase is to really, you know, do it and do it successfully. And then the various <clears throat> shrubs, you know, that produce fruit too. So, so yeah, different berries and all. Oh yeah, and we have you know a lot of you know aronia and high bush American cranberries and elderberries mixed in with like the hazel birds to create some good fedges, the food hedge. You know, a lot of the understory and kind of that, you know, between the nuts, um, the understory will be a lot of those native hedges. And so, uh, <coughs> Let's go back to the map. Okay. This is Sue Buckles, and you probably didn't think about when, when you might have a lawyer in the room that mm -hmm. I might be worried about, you know, certain things like having people climb trees to get cherries out of on a in a park like this. Have, have we? And that's why I like the idea of shrubbery, something yeah. people can reach. Yeah. Right. Are we planning to have equipment there so that people could be able to climb up to get the fruit? Um, has that, I, I grew up around cherry trees. My grandfather had them. We were always on ladders to get the good cherries out of the top. Mm -hmm. So it's just a thought. Um, yeah, it's a good thought. I think it's, it's important to consider. Um, well, I mean, I imagine there, you know, harvesting will have to be supervised, you know, by individuals and work parties and they'll have, that'll have to be managed. I think all like, that will need to be discussed as the trees get bigger and right. start to produce. It takes a while for them to start producing, but once they are, then we should definitely have some sort of rules or, or uh, some sort of plans for how people can pick things. And when, when they're ripe. Sometimes people don't know when things are ripe. Right, yeah, that's a good point. How big are the trees gonna be? They, they'll start up small. Um, like a non-dwarf fruit tree can get up to 25 feet. Yeah, but so 
Um, the ones that we're planting next weekend, are they going to start off as little seedlings or are no, they? No, uh, the fruit trees will probably be, you know, between five and seven feet tall, probably okay. three, probably about three years old. Okay. Um, and uh, like I would say between like an inch and a half to two inch diameter. Okay. And then, but the other trees, the nut trees are smaller, they're saplings. And then the ones that we're planting in October as well. So those will take a while. Like we're definitely planting for future generations with some of those species, but that's not to say we're not gonna bring in other things. Uh, one of the um, you know main issues is actually the eight sourcing um, aged, you know, like really good genetics of, of certain trees is hard. Um, so, so, and we're just actually really fortunate that uh, Jesse or, you know, there's a local person who's been propagating here and growing up and that 350 is, you know, starting to, you know, spread these seeds, so to speak. So, um, you know, I, so I think like local is, is, is really best. And there's also an initiative associated um, with the nut project that where um, uh, Jesse is looking for people that are interested in collecting seeds um, for growing and uh, for growing out um, and propagating. Um, so uh, yeah, and that involves a lot of education and identification and like how to know if it's ripe. And of course, like the wildlife, we're not the only, you know, we're just getting interested in these nuts, but the wildlife has known about them for a long time and all that they're out there. So it's, we have to work with that too. But anyhow, um, that's the story about like the sourcing. Um, but we will be able to source more when we, if we order, um, bare root stock in the winter. Um, from certain oh, wow. nurseries and we might be able to get uh, oh i see your hand frederica thanks um we might be able to get some older you know two to three four year old trees as well so again like this is just the first phase you know sure. so it's not to say there's not going to be lots of perennials and shrubs and natives um as well like this is just the in the first part okay frederica um i like the question about how to uh, reach the heights, you know, in down the road a few years, and perhaps we should really look at having uh, bushes and lower to the ground fruits like the peaches, which uh, don't grow to a huge height, and blueberries. Mm -hmm. um, something, something like that. Um, I don't want to say raspberries because you know they are weeds and spread all over, but blueberries um, might be a good way to go. And yeah, then, and there's, there's lots of berries, Josta berries and currants and gooseberries too. Like I think there's options. Okay, well, in connection with that, I just had this idea of using that abattoir, that shed, the building for education, like uh, a little center where there would be information about each tree a sign on the tree and then information in the shed about, uh, you know, when the fruit would be ripe, how to harvest it and uh, that kind of information for visitors. Love it. I think that's a great idea. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. We have a good example of that from uh, Barbara Smith's uh, Stratford or uh, pocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think speaking is going to be important. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, speaking of the pocket park, um, that park is going on ten years old. Yeah. They chose mostly dwarf varieties, um, and I have done some pruning there. And there are some cases where we need a ladder, but it's pretty rare with fruit pickers. We're able to get all the fruit that park focuses mostly on apples and pears and plums and a lot of shrubs, blueberries, hosta berries, and ground covers, um, lingonberries and strawberries, um, lots of varieties include, including nut trees. So I, I wanna invite um, both participants here and viewers who might be watching this later to visit the Pocket Park in South Stratford to get a sense of the kind of space we're looking to build in the park, where is, where is the riparian zone, we're looking to increase the native habitat while also putting in some species that can produce long-term nut trees. And those would be tall, 
Um, and that's also what's recommended actually in the flood regulations for increasing riparian buffer zones is to put in some taller trees as well. So um, I understand the concerns about height, but I wouldn't want that to really limit us, although it may be a great idea to start out with short varieties so that we can all gain the understanding and confidence to move forward. Okay, great. Yeah, all good considerations. I have a question. What's your idea of, of the circle of plums? Oh, okay, did John, did you have a question? <laughs> Gary. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> There's a very large deer herd that has lived out here for many years. Is that going to be a problem? Is that going to be a problem? No, but he's like oh. a large deer. Oh, did you say deer? Yes, deer. Oh, yeah, no, I think that we should do um, a, a fencing around to protect a lot of the saplings for sure. Okay, because I've seen as many as 15 or 18 deer here in the wintertime. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, and we will have to think about that because um, they can do some damage in the browsing for, yeah. And I, you know, I've actually had a fair amount of luck with garlic sticks. I don't know what they're called officially, but they're like these little, they look like pens and they have garlic oil in them. And you kind of poke this thing in and it emits the garlic. And I, I've done them alone and with fencing and it seemed to work okay you know, really actually limited. I didn't see any browsing. So yeah, we'll be implementing all um, <laughs> all methodologies for limiting the deer. We'll plant a whole garden for the deer to keep them on the other side. This is Kat again. Um, speaking of fencing, um, for the 18th, we are gonna want some wire caging. It doesn't have to be new or fancy to put around our youngest trees. And I wonder if anybody has any lying around that they want to donate. Um, if you do, you can just get in touch with us off list um, and we can coordinate that. We won't need a huge amount for the, the, young, um, the young saplings. Um, we will have to do something more considerable for the fruit planting yet to be decided species. <laughs> what exactly? And, um, you want is is this fencing you're talking about that's right just for a tree sapling so uh, a circle that we can put around the saplings for uh -huh. mostly for deer protection right right i yeah, think I, you might have some i have some as well i may have some too <laughs> <laughs> maybe we have that covered <laughs> Always, but you know, we're going to need a lot of it for over the, over but, the time. I have, yeah, we should I have consider a, that in our materials list and we'll be putting together a list of things we need to purchase. Sorry, Sally, go ahead. I, I have a bunch of it. Okay, great. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, okay, other considerations on the fruit. Who else lives in the neighborhood there? I'd love to hear from... I mean, everyone's input, of course, is welcome, and it's going to be, you know, free for public picking fruit. Um. So I live, I live right, uh, I live on Westfield Drive, um, and my back end of my property abuts the park. And um, I just bought this house and the land like six, seven weeks ago, and I have, I have a peach tree, I have a plum tree. And I have a bunch of apple trees, and I didn't even know that plum trees grew in Vermont. Um, so, if you want to come take a look and see if you can figure out which kind of plum I have, um, I don't know. Maybe that'd help. Um, but um, uh, I, I think the idea of of planting plum trees is is fabulous. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm in for the plum trees too. I, I like the idea, especially, I think it'll be something easily accessible for the kids walking, you know, 
uh, mm -hmm. walking down from the schools and stuff like that. And I like that idea. So plum would be good. Yeah, plums can be really accessible. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Dylan? Is, do, do plums fit into the vision that you had when you were initially kind of thinking about what could happen at this park? I think it's really, you know, what we have on hand and what everybody thinks is going to work in the space ecologically and um, culturally. And so um, if that's if that's what we have on hand and that's what we have, that's what we have. Okay, cool. Excellent. Okay, well, I mean, as long as is there's no opposition and if, if other, you know, if anyone's like, you know, laying in bed later thinking, oh no, we have to try this. Um, you know, the, the committee is open. So, and we'll be sure to, um, I would love actually to somehow make sure we get everyone's email that is on here if you haven't yet been able to connect with the, um, cause we, we would like to stay in touch, um, not only about work parties, but, um, you know, process as well. Um, but if there isn't any opposition to plums, I think we could plan on that and start with three and some guilds around them for the September 18th. And then we have our other list of the um, nut trees. And Kat and I will figure out, oh, oh yes, go ahead. I have a, I have a question. Um, yes. Do you think that we could fit a couple of low bush blueberries in a plum guild? Uh, yes, I do. Because it sounds like maybe blueberries would be desired too. Yeah, that's, um, that could be the understory guild with the plums. Fantastic. And then I just want to invite folks, again, the Stratford Pocket Park actually has a plum guild. They put five in their guild and they may have to take two trees out as time goes on. Um, but it is a lovely little guild and you can see a variety of medicinal plants and flowers. And so I just want to invite folks to, if there are any more input about the kinds of medicinal plants or flowers or Mm. other species we should and put herbs. in the gift. um karen and you know and i can certainly handle that list um but we want to make sure we're serving the community yes definitely yeah i love that pocket park definitely check it out it's very sweet they did a great job karen i have a question yeah um this is sandy at the west Hartford library um it looks like um, I want to mention the snowmobile trail that goes in between the barn and the um, tennis court. Yeah. And make sure that they're not going to run over anything. How are we going to protect that area from snowmobilers? When we, we walked it last spring, when there was still some snow on the ground and the trail was pretty well marked. Yeah, it seemed to me that it was it really like hugs that um, the really the base of the ridge or not. the. It ridge, does. The it does. I, I, yeah. And along. Um, yeah. But, you know, we along the riverside, a, it would probably be a good idea. And I'm so glad you're bringing these up because this helps us think about what's needed in terms of like materials and budgets as well. Um, but it'll really be a good idea to have some signage there that says, you know, this is a public space, you know, community Clifford Park community food forest. Yeah. Maybe um, some ribbons or something or those those colorful ribbons to say, you know, tree planted here or something. Yeah. Yep. And then since you have a member of the Kwichi Lakes um, there, you know, it might be an interesting um, thing to do is to connect, connect the trail outside of the winter um, in the spring, summer and fall from the park across the uh, Snowmobile Trail over to where the Queechee, the Queechee Lakes Green is on the other side of the river road. Oh, interesting. So it might, I, I think you'd have to get permission from landowners and things, but it would be nice to maybe connect the Queechee Green um, element there with all those hiking trails up over the ridge over to the park. Just a thought. Yeah, what a beautiful thought to have like a walking trail. We could even have like an interpretive, you know, native gardens. Right, right. Yeah. But, you know, you had to respect the landowners. 
land you're going over or across. I know that the snowmobiles have permission, but I don't know about having permission for walkers other other times of the year. Right. If what kind of easements exist? Well, those are good questions that we can. Yeah, it'd be great to look into that. Right. Thanks. Thank you for thank you for bringing those up. I know one thing about the vast trail during the winter. There is a volunteer that goes up and puts up um, a line of grade stakes and and uh, rope that designates the trail. And um, during my time at the town, I've never witnessed snowmobilers um, going on, going out of their bounds and like doing anything in the field on Clifford Park. Just so you guys know, that's good to know. Yeah. Actually, this this is Barry again. Um, I'm one of those folks that uses the trail and Dylan is correct. The club ropes off the trail, signs the trail, um, but we have had problems in the past with people either going underneath the rope or through the rope and riding in the open field. So you just might want to be aware of that. If anybody's interested in talking to the president of the club, it's Richard Wright down at Wright Sawmill on Route 5. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Okay. We yeah. Should, thank you. We should definitely reach out um, mm -hmm. and have a conversation. That, that's a great idea. Thank you so much. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, these are such good thoughts. This is why community process is so important because you know everyone has a different perspective and good questions and considerations to bring to the table. So yeah, thank you. So what, what are gonna be the next steps here? Okay, so the next steps are we take, you know, what we've come up with tonight as far as going forward with the plums and um, Kat and I are gonna go to the site and stake it out, um, which just means you know identifying where all the trees are gonna go and making that real clear and garnering the resources. We have to be very precise about um, digging the holes and um, being able to track how much we're taking out um, as it meets to the comparison of how much we're bringing in. So we yeah. are gonna set up a process that allows us to do that with ease and um, and then um, we'll hopefully you all will be able to meet all together uh, in person um, on the 18th to do some planting. Um, and we're going to be also spreading the word. So, um, you know, tell your neighbors that are in that community and um, hopefully we'll make a, you know, make a fun day of it. And to whatever extent we can, you know, potentially have some food and snacks and celebration too. Do you guys need any help between now and the 18th to facilitate? that fun day that could be amazing dylan can we get in touch with you yes you have my um, email excellent um karen and i'll get together and plan out the rest of the details and any potential costs um i just wanted to notice uh frederica wrote in the chat uh that she's got some fencing um and i think it's a good idea for any of us that have fencing that we can donate to bring it on the 18th and we can store it in the shed. I think that's a reasonable use of the space. Um, and then Frederica asked if we could repeat the bit about Wright Sawmill. And if I understand correctly, Barry was mentioning that um, the gentleman who runs Wright Sawmill is the coordinator for the trail. And it would be good to have a conversation with him about the food forest and how we can work together to protect the space. Awesome, yes. I hope that answered your question, Frederica. Thanks for having your eye there on the chat too, Kat. That's great. Just, just to add to this, to the snowmobile question, the club's name is called the Hurricane Riders. The president's name is Richard Wright, and he, he owns the sawmill at Wright's Sawmill. Okay. Great. Wonderful. 
Yeah, it's wonderful to build these partnerships now as a part of this multi-use collaboration too. And I love framing it as a protecting the trail as well. Um, okay, so next steps. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of kind of, you know, gathering the resources and mapping it and then spreading the word and coming out and having a fun day of planting, I think will be great. Yes. All right. Anything else? What are we missing? You're we, we, I mean, I'm definitely, um, I can put my, uh, maybe Kat and I will both put our emails in the chat. So if anyone has, wants to reach out um, or thinks of anything else, um, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Or if you're looking, if you know anyone or students that, especially high school age students that want to earn credit for working on um, kind of regenerative agriculture projects, um, also reach out because we have a lot of different opportunities and are working with a lot of schools around the Upper Valley through the Regeneration yeah. Corps. And maybe we can drop that link in here too. Great idea, Karen. I did also want to just let folks know that I just met with Matt Dragon, who is the new uh, advisor for the Hartford Area Tech uh, Career Technical Center. Um, and I had his students out working with me on Apple Corps projects at the town hall. They are very excited to work at Clifford Park as well as we move forward. We'll have to arrange some during the weekday school day projects for them, but we can rely on them ongoing um, for a team of skilled, amazing youth. That's great. Excellent. That is such great news and an awesome note to end on too. I mean, of course, if there's anything else that needs to be said, let's please do that. But it's, I think it's really exciting to work with some of these youth groups and on planting and these projects, so, yeah. Well, I would say thanks, Karen, Kat, and the rest of the Crow team for getting this project off the ground. It's really great. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you so much too. All right, well, it's really been a pleasure to meet you all. And um, thank you for tolerating this kind of dry format. I know it's like compares nothing to like what the, the feels are when we're like together getting our hands dirty and working with shovels and like actually getting to talk with each other. Um, Cause I know there's a lot of experience and expertise in the room um, that can also, you know find a place and land here in this, in this arena. So um, I just wanna put out the intention to kind of continue those connections and relationships. Um, and I really look forward to, yeah, talking with you all more individually and, and as a group. So, and thank you so much for spending your time, um, yeah, on a Thursday night here. Yeah, and thanks Resilient Hartford. You guys are great for bringing this whole project forward. We look forward to seeing all of you and more on September 18th, Saturday, starting at nine in the morning, we'll be wrapped up by noon. Oh yeah, thank you for the time frame. Yeah, nine to noon Saturday. Bring your tools, bring your masks in case we get too close. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll have some apple cider together. Oh, yeah. I know how I can help. Talk to you all later. Okay, yeah, we'll be in touch, Dylan. Thanks. Perfect. Thanks so much. Thanks. Yeah, I was just going to say, Kai, that would be awesome. I actually have three half gallons of frozen apple core cider from last year. Oh, well, maybe we should drink it at the planting. I think it's appropriate to kind of keep the seeds regenerating to the next. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring it. That's good. Sounds great. Good to see you, Thank Earl. You Thanks for being here again. Great to see you. Bye. Hey, everybody. Bye, Ruth. Bye. Good night, Sally and Leah. Bye, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank Good you. Night.